I want to speak to you about the prosperity principles of Jesus. The prosperity principles of Jesus. The prosperity principles of Jesus. Now, if you didn't know, Jesus had certain keys to prosperity. And if you can follow those keys to prosperity, I am very confident that something significant will happen to your financial life. Amen. Oh, amen. Now, if you want to hear the wisdom of anybody on prosperity, I believe that Jesus is the best person who can speak to you about your prosperity. Amen. So, please pay very good attention to what I'm going to say today, and I'm confident that something wonderful is going to happen for you. Can you turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse number 14? We are reading all the way to verse number 29. Matthew, chapter 25, verse number 14. We are reading all the way to verse number 29. Amen. Can we read? Can we read? All right, let's go. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Now, which kingdom are we talking about? We are talking about the kingdom of what? Of heaven. Amen. Who belongs to that kingdom? You belong to that kingdom. Hallelujah. I also belong to that kingdom. And Jesus Christ is telling us how that kingdom operates. Amen. So that if your life is operating outside that kingdom, it means that you are operating outside the principles of the kingdom. And if you operate outside the principles of the kingdom, you will suffer unnecessarily. Amen. And I want to believe that you don't want to suffer unnecessarily. You want to enjoy what God wants you to do or to enjoy. Amen. All right. So he said that as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He delivered unto them what? His goods. Other versions say he delivered unto them what? Talents. Amen. Wonderful. Let's go on. And unto one, he gave five talents. How many talents? Five talents. To another, two. And to one, another, two. And to another, one. Hallelujah. So five, two, and what? And one. To every man according to his several ability. To his what? Ability. So God is giving according to what? Your ability. What you have is because of your what? Ability. Amen. Am I talking to somebody at all? Sometimes you want something that is bigger than you. But what you have at any given point in time is according to what? Your ability. If you can understand that, what you will increase is not your prayer. What you will increase is your ability. Amen. According to his several ability and straightway, he took what? His journey. Amen. Wonderful. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded went and what traded with the same and made other what five talents all right and likewise he had received two he that had received two he also gained another word two but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lord's money there amen so he dug the earth and what? And put his Lord's word money. Now understand the transition. The Bible first said that they were giving goods. And then the Bible said that these goods were what? Were talents. And now these talents have become what? Money. Amen. They were goods. And then the Bible referred to them as what? As talents. And now he is referring to them as what? As money. Amen. Do you see the transition? So it could be goods, it could be talents, it could be what? It could be money, hallelujah. But the principle remains what? The same. Verse number 19. After a long time, the Lord of the house, those servants, of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. He did what? Accounting with what? With them. 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Wonderful. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. 
He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. So two has added what? Two. Wonderful. His Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Now it has come back to what? Talent. Lo, thou hast that which is thine. Amen. Jehoiada, take your thing. His Lord answered and said unto him, Wicked and slothful, wicked and what? Lazy. Wicked and what? Lazy servant. You know that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money, from talent to money, my money to the exchanges, to the bank, or to the investors, or to treasury bills, so that at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. Usury is interest. Amen. Wonderful. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. Because he had five and had gained five in addition. So he had ten and now they are adding what? One to it to make it what? Eleven. Amen. For unto everyone that has shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he has. Amen. Now, this is a very simple principle. This is the principle that says that the poor will become poorer and the rich will become what? Richer. Amen. Oh, are you hearing me? The poor will become what? Poorer and the rich will become what? Richer. It is not from the world. It is not a philosopher's principle. It is from the Bible. He who has will have what? More. And he that does not have, even what he has will be what? Will be taken away from him. Amen. Now, let me expound or explain to you a few things that were the principles of Jesus for your financial prosperity. And if you can understand it, I'm very confident that you will prosper and prosper beyond measure. Amen. While saying this, while saying this, I want you to know that our videos are on YouTube. Amen. The prosperity keys of Jacob, the prosperity keys of Egypt, the prosperity keys of Jesus Christ. Amen. All these are on YouTube. Listen to them more than 20 times. And when you do, you will be able to do what it says. And when you do what it says, you will be able to prosper financially. Amen. Because don't have the key to a door and yet you are standing in front of the door unable to open the door. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody at all? If you have the key to a door, you should be able to go to the door and do what? And open it. And the key to your financial breakthrough has been given in this series of teachings. What you need to do is to listen to the teachings and listen to them and listen to them to the point where now you have the ability to use the keys to do what? To benefit you. Amen. Are we good? Number one principle for the prosperity principle of Jesus Christ is do business. Number one, do business. Do business. You understand that when the, when the man gave the talent, the five talents to the man, the Bible said that he traded with it. He did what? I can't hear you. He did what? He traded with it. So, Bible, Jesus Christ is telling us that anytime you have an amount of money, what you need to do is that what? Do business. Tell somebody, do business. So you can be working for somebody, but you must do what? Business. The Bible says that when he received the money, when he received the talent, when he received the goods, he traded with it. Trading is business. Hallelujah. So you need to do business with the money that you have. Don't sit down and say that, as for me, I was born to be an employee. As for me, I was born to sit down for people to give me money. No, Jesus is saying that the first principle to your prosperity is that you must be able to do what? Business. Amen. 
Now, business is simply exchanging goods or services for money. Hallelujah. So you exchange a good or you exchange a service and people pay you in return. Now, if you look around you, you realize that there are business opportunities all around you. One day I told you that everything you buy is a business. Everything you buy is a business. You buy water, it is a business. You buy hair, it is a business. You buy shoe, it is a business. You buy clothes, it is a business. You do your hair, it is a business. You buy food, it is a business. Whatever you buy, you buy carpet, it's a business. You buy furniture, it's a business. You buy microphone, it's a business. Whatever you buy is what? It's a business. Hallelujah. So that don't be at the place where you are always buying. You must also come to the place where you are doing what? You are selling. Hallelujah. So Jesus said number one principle for your prosperity is that you must do business. Ask somebody sitting by you, which business are you doing? Oh, shake the person and ask the person, which business are you doing? So number one principle of Jesus for your prosperity is that you must do business. Now I've come to see people who are doing business and they are doing their business anyhow. Hallelujah. When you do business anyhow, you will never succeed at it. Hello. When you do business anyhow, you will never do what? Succeed at it. So if you are doing business and you are not succeeding, it has nothing to do with the business. It has everything to do with what? With you. And I've told you before that you need to be competent in business for you to be able to do what? To make money. Hallelujah. <laughs> be what? Competent. Be what? competent because Jesus says that the way to go is what? Is to do business. If the way to go is to do business and you are doing business, you must be competent at the business so that you can make money out of the business. If you are not, if you are doing business and you are not making out of it, it means that you have a competence problem, not a business problem because business is the way to go. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? No, you understand that the person who had the two talents also, what did he do with the talent? The Bible says that he traded. He did the same thing that Jesus was talking about. He went and did business with what? With the two talents, amen. Or with the two cities. And he was able to make what? Make a substantial amount. He gathered two more onto what? Onto the, onto the two talents that what? That he had, amen. Or well, am I talking to somebody at all? So business is the way to what? To go because Two out of the three people, they did what? They did business with the money that was what? That was given to them. What about the third person? Did he do business? He did not do business. And so Jesus said, the man said unto him, you are a wicked and unprofitable servant. Why? Because you didn't do business with the money that you had. Amen. When you have money in your hand, don't think first about spending. The first thing you need to think about is what? Is business. Amen. Are you hearing me? When you have money in your hand, the first thing to think about is not spending. The first thing to think about is what? Is business. Because these people that the man gave the money to, they could have easily said that now that the money has been given to me, I can do what? I can spend it. But they did not spend it. They did what? Business with it. And as I am talking to you, I know that there is an amount of money in your hand. And that amount of money in your hand, you have decided to spend it. Actually, you have Writing down the things that you are going to spend the money on. Hallelujah. But I'm here with a word of advice for you. I'm here with a word from the world for you. That instead of spending that money, do business with that money. And this is a prophetic instruction to somebody. Instead of spending that money, do business with that money. Hallelujah. The money is for business. It is not for what? For spending. As long as you are spending money and you are not doing business with the money, you are not going to prosper financially. And that is why Jesus said, out of the three people, two people did business with the money and they came back with more money. Hallelujah. And the person who did not do business with the money, actually, he remained at the same place and became worse at the end of the day because what he had was taken away from him. When you don't do business, what you have is taken from you. True or false? No, let me ask you. You were given five million. What happened to it? It's finished. Why? Because if you don't do business with your money, what you have is what is taken from you. It's a simple principle. 
If you don't do business with your money, it is what? It is taken away. It's a simple principle. So when you have money, the first thing you need to think about is what? Business. Number two principle that Jesus expounded on prosperity is that every amount is capital. I repeat, every amount is capital. Number two prosperity principle of Jesus Christ, every amount is capital. Now you will notice that one servant had five talents, amen. The second servant had how many talents? Two talents. And the third servant had how many talents? One talent. What was the expectation of the master? The expectation of the master was that all three of them should do business with what? With the money that they what? That they had. Whether five or two or one, he expected them to what? To do business with it. It means that whatever the amount of money you have in your hand, it is capital. Amen. I see people with 100 cities looking for capital of 2,000. I see people with 2,000 looking for capital of 5,000. I see people with 5,000 looking for capital of 10,000. What you must understand is that every amount is what is capital. And that is the trap that is defeating a lot of people. What they have, they assume it is not enough. So the man has five and he is looking at somebody who has ten. And the one who has two is looking at somebody who has five. And the one who has one is looking at somebody who has two. But the principle that Jesus gave is that every amount of money you have is capital. Amen. There is capital for a real estate business. And there is capital for orange business. If you have capital for orange business, do orange business. Every amount is what is capital. Do business with it, amen. So that you can rise from the orange business and go into the real estate business, amen. Don't sit on your capital waiting for somebody else's capital when you can do something with the capital you have. And that is why Jesus clearly spoke to you and said that every amount you have is capital, whether five or two or one. The talent that I have given to you, you can trade with it and do something with it, amen. Right here in this church, people started businesses with 300 Ghana cities. And today, they have grown that business into 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 100,000 businesses. Amen. And somebody has 300 cities capital and is waiting for 2,000 cities capital. That is the problem right there. Jesus is saying, whatever amount you have, that is your capital. Look at somebody, ask the person, how much do you have? Well, I said, ask the person, how much do you have? Tell the person, that is your capital. Do you know that 50 CDs is capital? Yeah, the 50 CDs you despise, that is somebody's capital that they are looking for, amen. Hey, hey. I said the 50 cities you despise, it is somebody's word capital. The 100 Ghana cities you despise, it is somebody's word capital. The 3,000 you despise, it is somebody's word capital. Amen. Look at your own life. Five years ago, wasn't 1,000 cities capital for you? Wasn't 200 cities capital for you? Had you even seen 200 cities before? That means that at every given point, whatever amount you have is what is capital. The problem is that at any given point, instead of finding an opportunity that matches your capital, you want somebody else's what? Capital. Amen. So, so the person with one talent is looking for the person with two talents capital. And the person with two talents is looking for the capital of the person who has five talents. And the problem is that the capital was given based on ability. Prove yourself with one talent and I will give you two talents. Prove yourself with two talents and I will give you five talents. That is the principle of God. Hallelujah. Until you prove yourself with little, you can't prove yourself with much. That is why people get big money and they blow their money. Why? Because they did not prove themselves with little. Amen. Anybody who wastes money, is that it means that the person was not able to prove himself with what? With little. That is why people who win lotto and all sorts of money, their money disappears from them. Do you know why? Because they did not have a solid management principle. They did not have a solid ability to manage money. So when the money came, the money went just as it was. It came fast in, fast out. Am I talking to somebody? 
How many of you have received gifts before? Somebody has dashed you money before. Give me a wave offering. Somebody has dashed you money before. Now, when they dashed you the money, what did you do with the money? Oh, um, help me. What did you do with the money? That is how we. Well, that is what we do with money that we did not work. We did not work for. It is because you don't have ability. If you had ability, you would have turned that money into something profitable. Hallelujah. So that instead of looking for more money, look for more ability. See, can I can I be truthful with you? Can I be honest with you? If you start a business with five hundred Ghana cities. And you have not been able to turn that business to 700 Ghana cities. And you are shouting that you need capital. Is it capital you need? No. You don't need capital. Hallelujah. Because every amount is what? Is capital. Tell somebody every amount is capital. No, I can't hear. Tell somebody every amount is capital. So right where you are, the amount of money that you have, it is what? Capital. Trade with it. When you trade, you make more. When you trade, you make more. And then it moves to another level of what? Of capital. And then you do what? You trade with it. Hallelujah. Until now, it gets to the capital that you are looking for. Am I talking to somebody? Because there are too many people sitting down on capital. Hello? I said there are too many people sitting down on what? On capital. Do you know that what you spent in this week can start a food business? This week, what you spent can start a food business. It can start a rice and stew business. It can start a watch business. What you spent last week can start a business. Amen. True or false? Do you know that what is in your pocket right now can start a business? Hello? What you have in your pocket, it can do what? It can start a business. And that is why it is very important that you don't despise the little that you have. Don't do what? Despise the little that you have. Because many of us, that is our problem. We despise the little that we have. Amen. It's nothing. And that is what the guy with one talent did. You have one talent. And what did you do with the one talent? You went to dig the ground and hit the one talent in the ground. Why? Because you considered it as what? As useless. As nothing. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody at all? Don't despise the little you have. Very, very important. Very, very what? Critical. So the second principle is what? Every amount is... I can't hear you. Every amount is capital. Number three. Number three principle, prosperity principle of Jesus Christ. Jesus preferred investment over savings. He preferred investment over savings. He preferred investment over savings. And I'm talking to you about the prosperity principles of the kingdom because he said the kingdom of heaven is what? It's like this. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is what? It's like this. A man went out and gave talents to his servants. That is how the kingdom of heaven is. So in the kingdom of heaven, every amount is what? Capital. I don't have capital. What do you have? It is capital. Hey. <laughs> the day somebody comes and tells you I don't have capital, ask the person, how much do you have? Because every amount is capital in the kingdom. Amen. And in the kingdom, everybody must do what? Business. He said, this is how the kingdom is. Everybody must do business. Jesus preferred investment over what? Savings. Why? The man that dug the ground and put the talent or the money there, what was he doing? He was saving. And he was called what? Wicked and what? Unprofitable. Why? Because he went to save. Amen. It means that simply Jesus preferred investment out over what? Over saving. Is it good to save? Yes, it is good to save. That means that if you are in the kingdom and you don't save anything, you have a bigger problem. Hallelujah. 
Are you hearing me? If you are in the kingdom and you don't save, you have what? A bigger problem. May you repent from today. I said, if you don't save, may you repent from today. Your amen is too small. If you don't say, may you repent from today. Because if Jesus has a problem with those who are saving and not investing, imagine if you are not even saving. This is what we call mercy and atonement. We call it what? Mercy and what? And atonement. Because you, you are not investing. And even the guy who was saving, they called him what? Wicked and unprofitable. The guy who was saving. They called him wicked and unprofitable. Then you, that don't even save. Imagine what they will call you in the kingdom. Look at somebody and ask the person, do you save? <laughs> Shake another person. Ask the person, do you save? Hey! It means that if you don't save, if the person who was saving is called a wicked, is called unprofitable, is called useless, and is asked to go to somewhere, some bush somewhere, then imagine the one who is not saving. I don't know the name that will be used to describe you in the kingdom of heaven where we are. Amen. Put your hand on your head and say, Mercy, Lord. Hey! From today, may you save. And from saving, may you invest. Jesus said that as long as you are saving, you are wicked and unprofitable. Why? Because what you are saving can multiply. What you are saving can do what? Can multiply. So if you are only saving, I call you wicked. I call you unprofitable. And he says, look at the guy I gave five to. He invested. He did business with the five. And he has five more. That is what I am talking about. That is what I am looking for. The one I gave two talents to. He was able to multiply it and bring two more. But as for you, you have brought back what I gave to you. You have become wicked and unprofitable. Because you chose saving over investment. You chose saving over business. Because what you have saved, you forgot the second principle of Jesus. That every amount is what? Capital. Ask somebody, what have you saved? That is capital. And if you have not saved, repent. Hallelujah. Because in the kingdom, if you save, you are wicked. If you save, you are wicked. For saving, you are wicked. How much more that you don't have savings? May the Spirit of God talk to you. I said, may the Spirit of God talk to you. That, look, no matter what you earn, save something. If you earn 50, 50 cities, save 50 pesos. For talk's sake. For what? For talking's sake. Don't ever be at a point in your life that you have nothing in your savings. Because those who save are called wicked. So at least be wicked. Be what? Be wicked and save 10 cities. Let us see 100 cities in your account. Let us see 20 cities in your account. Don't be there and last year you cannot show us of evidence of last year's money that you earned. Hey. Hey. Are you hearing me? Don't ever be there and you don't have evidence of last year's money. Don't ever be there and don't have evidence of last two years' money. Because even that evidence is called what? Wickedness. And what we are talking about here, the man saved the money for a long time. Praise God. So the next principle I said is what? Jesus preferred investment over what? Over savings. And there are so many investment opportunities. The reason why the unemployment rate is high is because your money, your capital is sitting in your bank account. That is why unemployment is high. Because in the kingdom, if you understand this, it will save you. Every amount is capital. Every amount is for business. And once you start that business, this is another person who has been employed. Amen. Oh, praise God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So Jesus said, invest. Invest. Invest over savings. 
invest over savings. And I've told you that there are so many investment opportunities. I prefer you start a business and fail, although you will not fail, than to put the money there and let it just be there. Businesses don't fail. People make businesses fail. Amen. So if you can make a business fail, it means you can make a business what? Succeed. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you can make a business fail, then you must understand that you have the same ability and the capability to make the business what? Succeed. Amen. So if you have failed the business, rise up and let it what? Succeed. If you look at those who are handling big businesses in our generation today, they will tell you the amount of businesses they started till they got to where they are. Amen. Do business. That money there, that one Ghana that you have gone to dig the F and put there, it is capital. If you didn't know, let me tell you, one city is capital. I said what? One city is capital. If you like go to Cantamanto, whether you not get one city dress, then you can sell for 10 cities. True or false? True. 10 cities is what? Capital. Actually, it is big capital. 10 cities is what? Big capital. Because if you can get one dress for one city, you can get 10 dresses for what? For 10 cities. And it is what? Out of that 10 cities, you can easily make 100 Ghana cities. It is what? Big capital. What you are calling no capital, what you are calling useless amount, what you are saying you have no capital in itself is capital. Invest it over what? Over saving it. Invest it over what? Over saving it. Very critical. Very important. Ask somebody by you, what is your money doing there? What is your money doing under your pillow? What is your money doing under your bed? What is your money? Some of you have tied your money in cloth and put it under your dresses. What is the money doing there? Some of you, your money is in your mobile wallet. If we see the money in your mobile wallet, what is your money doing there? And do you know the interesting thing? When your money is in your mobile wallet, somebody else is working with it. You didn't hear me. Do you know that when your money is in the bank, somebody is working with your money? Do you know? So why are you not working with it? That money you say is small. It's useless. It's not capital. When you put it in the bank, somebody takes it and works with it. That money in your mama wallet, that you say it is nothing. Do you know somebody takes it and works with it? How many of you have got interest on your momo before? Yeah. Oh, even yesterday, I got interest on my momo. Amen. Why? Because somebody is what? Is working with what? With that money. Why not you? Look, you see, can I say something? Oh, can I say something? You see, when you don't let the word of God train you, you begin to have certain mindsets that you shouldn't have. Look, go to microfinance. Eh? Go to banks. Today, today, today. Monday morning and go and sit in the microfinance and sit down the whole day and see the amount of people who are coming for loans and look at the amount they are coming for as loan. Some people come and apply for loan and the way they are writing on the book, you would think they are coming for 500,000 Ghana cities and all they are coming for is 200 cities loan. True or false? 200 cities loan to do what? Business. And you have 200 cities and you are doing younger. 200 cities is too small. Every amount is what? Capital. People are coming and they are coming for 150 Ghana cities loan to do business. To do what? Business. And you think that 150 cities is not capital. It is belt money. Investment over what? Over savings. Find something to do what? Investing, and that is the problem. Do you see that even though the, the man, the, the, the master of the kingdom called the man wicked, he called him another name. What name did he call him? Slothful, which is what lazy. Amen. The problem why many people are not able to prosper financially is what we call laziness. What laziness? Didn't the Bible say it in the book of Proverbs? 
the hand of the diligence was make her rich, but he became a poor. That dealeth with what? A slack hand. So here again, you are seeing that the problem why he had one talent and the one talent remained one talent is that apart from him being wicked, he was also what? Lazy. Hallelujah. Because you ask people that find an opportunity to invest your 50 Ghana cities in. Do you know what they will tell you? I can't find anything. Hello? And now I've become sick and tired of people who know how to give excuses. I've just become sick and tired. You say do this, they say I can't. You say do this, they can't, I can't, I can't find, I can't do, I can't do. Jesus said you have become wicked. And not only have you become wicked, your other problem is that you have become what? You have become too lazy for your own prosperity. May God deliver you out of laziness. I said, may God deliver you out of laziness. You have become too lazy for your own word, prosperity. Because how come up to today, from the beginning of the year, January, up to this time, we are in what? August. You have not been able to find an opportunity. Is the opportunity gold hidden under the earth? And they say things like, I've looked everywhere. I can't find anything. Yet people who have not looked everywhere are finding things. May God deliver you from laziness. Hold somebody's shoulder. Tell the person, may God deliver you from laziness. I said, hold somebody's shoulder. Tell the person, may God deliver you from laziness. May God deliver you from laziness. It, it is that, 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 that deliverance from laziness that we are what? We are looking for. Amen. And if God can deliver you from laziness, you will prosper financially. <laughs> Pastor, I don't know what to do with 100 Ghana cities. Stop being lazy. Pastor, I don't know what to do with 200 Ghana cities. Stop being lazy. Pastor, I don't know what to do with 500 Ghana cities. Stop being lazy. Pastor, some people can even say, I don't know what to do with 10,000 Ghana cities. Hey! Hey, I don't know. I don't know what to do. It is what? Laziness. Find it. Do what? Find it. Because it is what? It is there. Can you imagine? I was sitting down on businesses and all along I was going up and down, up and down, up and down. I was lazy mentally. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Until just in the twinkle of an eye, I just started businesses cry like that. Hallelujah. Why? Because all along I was being what? Mentally what? Lazy. How can you have 10,000 and say you cannot find an opportunity? How can you have 500 and say you cannot find an opportunity? How can you have 1,000 cities and say you cannot find an opportunity? Meanwhile, somebody is sitting here right now looking for that same amount of money to be able to do something with it. Amen. I go to Accra, somebody is looking for 20 cities. If I go to Abosio, okay, somebody is looking for what? 13 cities. 13 Ghana cities. They will go and buy a spare part and spell up spare part for what? For 100 Ghana cities. You are sitting on 13 cities and you are saying that, I don't know what to do with 13 cities. 13 cities is massive capital. 13 cities can transform your life. 100 cities can transform your life. Amen. If you, if you add hard work to it. If you add what? Hard work to it. One day I sent somebody to a farm in Central Region to buy coconut. He brought the coconut. When the coconut had arrived, that very night the coconut came. The coconut finished. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Finished. In the car, they finished buying the coconut. That same night. And the car arrived at 1 a.m. Hallelujah. 1 and the coconut had finished. Yes, somebody is sitting here. Says that I don't have what? I don't have capital. 100 cities can buy coconut. 100. How many? 100. The problem is that you don't want to invest. You just want the money to be what? To be there. Like the man went to dig the F and what? And put the money there. So your money is what? Is there. That is wickedness. That is what? Laziness. Choose investment over what? Over saving. Look at somebody, tell the person, by the end of the year, show me your business. Oh, shake the person, tell the person, by the end of the year, show me your business. Ask the person, how many businesses do you have? What did they say? 
If it is one, tell the person by the end of the year, add another one. If it's two, by the end of the year, add another one. Amen. Because I can't imagine why one person can have 20 businesses and you are still at zero and you are comfortably dancing. Am I talking to somebody? I said, I cannot imagine why one person has 20 businesses and you are comfortably at zero and you are still in a comfortable lead. And you are urging all your supporters to do what? To keep calm. I thought you'd give a clap of a note to God. We are in what? A comfortable lead. And we urge all our supporters to do what? We can't keep calm. Hallelujah. Because people have 20 businesses and you have ability, if not to get 20, at least to get what? One. Investment over what? Over saving. Today when you go home, look at your Momo account. Look at your bank account. Look under your bed. Look at your shoe. Because some of you, your shoe is the capital you have been looking for. Amen. And do what? Business. I've given you how many keys? Three. Can I give you a final one? Or do I have permission to give you a final one? <coughs> Number four. Jesus believed in profit. Profit. Don't do business and lose and smile. Hello? Don't do business and lose and smile. There are too many people who are smiling at losses. It's serious, though. I don't know. You know, when, when you don't pay bills, hello, like, you live with your father and your mother and you are doing business and the business is bringing one CD a month and you are smiling. Amen. Oh, praise God. You are what? Smiling. One CD cannot pay for your electricity. It cannot pay for your water. It cannot pay for the rent of the shop. It cannot pay for food. It cannot pay your worker. Amen. It cannot pay anything. And you are still smiling. You are doing what? Smiling. No. That doesn't happen in the kingdom. We don't smile at losses. The kingdom doesn't permit losses. Amen. Are you hearing me? The kingdom doesn't permit what? Losses. So if you have realized that you are always making a loss, you need to sit up. Sit up. Sit up. Because every business that is making a loss can make a profit. And the kingdom is such that we don't permit losses. So if you are making losses, sit up. You see, today we have people who are comfortable with losses. We have people who are blaming the calling of God for why their business is not making. Meanwhile, there are other people who are called of God whose businesses are what? Are you the only one who has run away from the call of God? Oh, praise God. Oh, hello. You see, I find it difficult. And why do you even blame the call? Who ran away? Is it the call who ran away or you ran away? Are you getting what I'm trying to say? We, we blame everything. We blame everything. From family witches to lack of capital to bad location to Facebook cheating us to having bad customers. Praise the Lord. But I keep on saying one thing. The thing you are doing and failing, we can put somebody there and the person will do what? Succeed. True or false? The thing you are doing and failing, we can put somebody there and the person will do what? Will succeed. So that the problem is not that thing which is failing. The problem is the one who is making it what? Fail.
Praise the Lord. Please, are you understanding me? Sometimes you need to look at yourself and say that I must change. Because if you don't change, nothing changes. Do you hear me? Look, somebody say, I'm running Facebook advert. Nobody is buying. But somebody too is running Facebook advert and what? And people are buying. Amen. I have a saloon. Nobody is coming. Somebody also has a saloon. And people are what? Are coming. I do makeup. Nobody is coming. Somebody too is doing makeup. And it has more people than what? Than necessary. It means that it is not what you are doing. It is who? You. So honestly sit down and evaluate yourself. Evaluate yourself. Because the problem is that, can I say something? If you are lazy, you always blame other people. If you are lazy, you always blame other people. If you are lazy, you always blame other things. Amen. Why don't people come to church? The people don't like God. Go and look at other churches. People are there. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Please, are you understanding me? So, stop looking at others. Begin to do what? Look at yourself. Stop saying it's Facebook. Stop saying it's location. Stop saying it is the business. And start looking at who? Yourself. Because in the kingdom, profit is what is needed. Not losses. Not, I can't tell you, not losses. So, Jesus said, in the kingdom, profit. In the kingdom, profit. Anytime you make a loss, look at yourself. What do I need to learn? What do I need to improve? What do I need to add to myself to be able to bring what? Profit. But the truth of the matter is that when you make a loss, there are people who don't add anything to themselves and they go back into the same thing. When you make a loss, what did you add to yourself? To become more competent so that you don't continue making what losses. Don't go with the same person who made the loss. Amen. That is why when a team is struggling, they sack the coach. Amen. Are you hearing me? When a team is struggling, what happens? They sack what? The coach. Because the same person that caused the problem cannot be the same person who is doing what? Who is solving the problem. Amen. And when I'm saying this, I'm saying that you that caused the problem, you cannot be the same person solving the problem. You need to be a different person. And you can easily be a different person. Hallelujah. Do you know that who I was yesterday is not who I am today? I have added something to myself. Who I was last week is not who I am today. Why? I have added things to myself. Because I am always learning. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. But we have people who they were yesterday is who they are today. Who they were last year is who they are today. And if we don't take care in the next 10 years, who they are today is who they will be in the next 10 years. They will not add anything to themselves. So the same hairstyle they do, they do it. The same way they do promotion. The same way they do marketing. The same way they do business. That is how they are doing it. Four years ago and today, they are still doing the same thing. The person who caused the loss cannot be the same person who is taking the business into profit. You need to add something to yourself so that you can be a different person. Jesus, that's the principle number four. Jesus believed in what? Profit. Evaluate yourself. Evaluate what you are doing. Are you making profit? Or every year you are bringing loss? Every year you are bringing loss. Every year you are bringing loss. You need to evaluate what? Yourself. Because in the kingdom of heaven, we don't tolerate loss. That's the principle of Jesus. Profit. He said, at least, if you had even put it in the bank, it would have brought what? Profit. It would have brought what? Interest. It means that in the kingdom, we don't lose. We add to it. Don't lose from your money. Add to it. Amen. And anytime you lose, learn. Anytime you lose, what? Learn. Because you cannot go into the same thing with the same person you are. That caused the first loss. Amen. It's a basic principle of life. You did something and you lost. It didn't work out. 
And then you go and do the same thing again without adding any knowledge, without adding anything to yourself. What is going to happen? <laughs> You're going to lose again. And the kingdom doesn't permit what? Losses. Let's summarize. What are the four prosperity principles of Jesus? Number one, do business. Everybody must do business. Number two, every amount is what? Is capital. And the reason why he said everybody should do business is that every amount you have right now is what? Is capital. Take it and what? And do business with it. You have no excuse to say that what? You don't have capital. Because every amount is what? Is capital. And that is why you can fulfill principle number one of doing what? Business. Because every amount is what? Is capital. Whether one city or ten cities or twenty cities, you can do business. Number three. Jesus preferred investment over savings. He called the person who could not invest, who could not do business, a wicked and a lazy servant just because he saved. Amen. So if saving is lazy, saving is what? Lazy and what? And wicked. It means that if even you don't have a savings account, then you have a problem. Amen. You must be able to tell, this is the amount I made 10 years ago. This is the amount I saved from this one for every year so that you will not be what? Worse than a wicked man. Amen. Oh, praise God. From today, show evidence of the money you made in 2022. Show evidence of the money you made in 2023. Let there be evidence. If even it is one city, put it down for evidence sake. So that you are not worse than what? Wicked. That's number three. Jesus preferred investment over what? Over saving. That money you have put there, that is doing nothing. That is any no interest. Take it and invest it. Amen. And if you are not able to find an investment opportunity, it is because you are mainly what? Lazy. You are mainly what? Lazy. Because there are so many around. If you want to find it, you do what? You will find it. Do you know that there is a principle of God that says that ask and you shall what? Seek and you shall knock and the door shall be. Because everyone that asketh what? Receiveth. And everyone that seeketh that's what? Findeth. If you seek, you will do what? You will find. People say they are seeking and they are not seeking. Because as long as you are seeking, you will do what? You will find. It is a principle of the world. It is what? A principle. It works everywhere. Whether you are in China or Afghanistan, if you seek, you will find. What people call seeking is not seeking. It's playing. Because when you engage in seeking, you will find. Hello? When you engage in what? Seeking, you will do what? You will find. Knock and the door shall be what? If the door is not open, you didn't knock. It's as simple as that. Amen. You see, if you live your life like that, you cannot fail. Hello? If you live your life like that, you cannot do what? If you knock and the door did not open, it means you didn't what? Because when you knock, the door will be open. Should I show you why? How many of you have knocked on people's houses and nobody minded you before? Oh, help me. And then you decided to bang, bang, bang. And then they came to open you. The first one, you called it a knock. To them, it is not a knock. Hello? Like me, my house. I don't expect anybody in my house. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, I'm not that type that every day you have visitors. No, I don't have visitors. Amen. I don't expect anybody in my house. So if you come and knock my house, forget it. Amen. I'm not expecting you. Amen. Oh, praise God. I'm not what? You need to do what? Bang. Go. 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 That is what I call what? Knock. And that is when you'll be what? Opened. Amen. Even some, I hear it and I don't mind you. Amen. Oh, praise God. Because this is a, it's not a serious knock. Amen. Somebody comes to knock. You know, this man has come to look for money, so you won't be. Amen. Amen. But when the person knock, boom, boom, boom. Yes. That to me is when I will come and what? And open you. Why? Because this one is not, it is serious. Amen. So some of you think you are knocking, and then we are hearing, but we know that this is a joker. This person is what? He says he's knocking, but he's what? He's joking. Because when you knock, the door will be what? Open. Some of you, they say, go and look. 
go and find the solution to this problem. <clears throat> and then you go on YouTube. And then you go and watch two videos. How many videos? Two. Two videos. And then you go, and then the thing does not work. And you say, eh, eh, eh. When I was struggling in my writing business, and for two months, I sold only two books. Do you know how many videos I watched? 40 videos. Amen. After the 40 videos, I read 40 articles. So in total, how many? 80. After the 80 articles, I then went and read how many books? Two books. Amen. Praise the Lord. All this to be able to what? To solve a problem. And when I came back, my God, my God, the results proved that when I went to seek, I did what? I found. Amen. And I've had experiences with people. When you tell them to go and look for something, they go and watch a 15-minute video. They watch three minutes of it. Amen. One video, three minutes of it. And then they will tell you that, I have finished. I have mastered it. And yet, they are not getting the results that they are supposed to do what they are supposed to get. They didn't seek. They just went to play. I know you don't clap. And if you ask, you will do what? You will see. Pastor, I've been asking. You have not been asking. Amen. Oh, praise God. There are ways to ask. I said there are ways to do what? 